parents of the woman accused of killing her four children in Ngobo in the Eastern Cape say they will continue to support her. Her father says she confessed to him. The 32-year-old was arrested on Wednesday and appeared in the Ngobo Magistrates Court yesterday. Newsroom Africa, uh, Zikona Chona is in Mtata for us covering the story and she joins us live this morning. Uh, Zikona, a harrowing story, uh, yet another one of children at risk in our country, the violence that children face coming from within their homes um, as we covered that story on the AM report just yesterday. I'm sure you've spoken to a number of people while you've been in Ntata. Give us a sense of those conversations. Indeed, Michelle, a very heartbreaking story today. Here we have parents that are heartbroken and disturbed by the loss of their grandchildren, but at the same time they say they will support their child. They believe that she was not in the right state of mind when she allegedly committed these crimes. Yesterday when I spoke to her father, he was recalling his morning routine and he says every single day he would wake up and go and wake up his grandchildren. And he says as he entered the door, one of them would look up and smile and then burst into laughter. And he says now he's just replaying that and saying that he will never get to witness such an experience again because his grandchildren are now gone. He also recalls the blurry moment or memory that he says at the time at which the forensic experts came to fetch the four little bodies from their home. He says he did not remember that moment, but when he came to Mtata from Ngobo um, to identify his grandchildren, he says he just burst into tears at the sight of their faces. The grandmother also very heartbroken, saying that she was keeping chickens for her grandchildren to feed them. There's a tradition that when you pass or a grade or when you achieve something great in your life, your grandparents in particular would give you a chicken and they would, the family would have a feast in your honor. And she says now when she woke up on uh, Thursday and she looked at her chickens, she looked at them with resentment. She absolutely did not understand why now she has to keep them because her grandchildren are gone. But that entire community in that village in Ngobo is devastated and absolutely shocked by this, uh, this horrific ordeal. They say they simply did not see it coming. Nothing like that has ever hit that community. But they too have rallied behind the accused and they're saying they will certainly support the family as they go through this. The family has repeatedly said that they don't believe that the 32-year-old was in a right mental state of mind when going through, when uh, she allegedly committed this crime. The family is currently receiving support from social workers. I spoke to the grandmother of the, children, of the grandchildren yesterday, and she says she's really appreciated the counseling that she has been receiving from, show, from social workers in this province. And she was saying that she hopes that her daughter, too, um, will get help as she, as she navigates through this. Mm just really difficult to comprehend the details of the story, Zikona. These four children aged between two months and 11 years. As you said, the community there also incredibly shaken, uh, just like the family is, the community supporting the family. What about the children in that community that would have been friends with these little ones? Mm. Mm. Certainly, we spoke to a lot of community members yesterday who said that their children played with um, these young ones who, who have now died. But they also say, I spoke to one mother who said her daughter, who is seven years old, keeps on asking if her friend is really gone. Is my friend really dead? And she's now finding herself in a situation where she has to explain what death is to her child, that it means that her friend will not come back. But as I've mentioned, the accused, the 32-year-old that is, did appear in the Noble Magistrates Court yesterday. She has told the court that she has no previous convictions or pending cases. She's also said that she plans to apply for bail. But her father was in the gallery to support his daughter. And this is what he had to say after those court proceedings. <laughs> Sembegi 
aluko ultando. Hmm. So, now, I, I'm sure the family will be asking themselves, um, you know, where to from here? Um, th th they're taking it, no doubt, one day at a time. Uh, what happens next for this family, for this grandfather, this grandmother, this mother who is now in custody for the murder of her four children? The family is really confused by this, as you mentioned a little earlier on, the grandfather of these children does say that in the morning on Wednesday, his daughter did come to him and say, I have killed my children. And he actually says, he asked her to repeat what she said, and, and she repeated, and she said, I killed my children. Oh, Abandon Abam. So they certainly just trying to piece together what could have happened, how did this happen, what was going on in her head when um, she allegedly committed this crime. They are asking themselves a lot of questions. But what I did find heartwarming is that the father, when we visited the home, said he wants to share his story because he wants other people to know uh, about mental illness, for example, to say, to say um, Talk to your children about the things that they are going through, be it in relationships, be it in friendships, but just open up and have a conversation with them so that you are aware of what is happening around them. Because at this point, as a family, they don't know. They did not see this coming. They woke up normally on Wednesday morning only to be met with tragedy. The family is currently planning the funeral services of all the four children. We do know that the local municipality has said that it will pay for the funeral service and it's not clear as to when that will be held from what i understand from the family the proposed day is next week saturday but for now they're focusing on the bail application which was expected to take place next week um, Thursday, so the accused will be back in court and her father will be in court. He says he will be supporting his daughter and many of the other family members from the family also showed up in court yesterday. In court yesterday, she actually started crying in the dark and her father believes that seeing her family there to support her actually uh, resulted in her breaking down. They say that she's absolutely shaken. Her mother said she seemed very remorseful when they asked her after the incident what happened um, but for now I think everybody's just trying to just come to terms and just try to make sense of exactly what it is that happened the family does acknowledge that if she did commit the crime then it's a crime that she must pay for they don't say that they reward her for what she did but they say something happened and they, it's regrettable but they do stand by her, by her because they believe that mentally she was not okay and still is not okay yeah. Yet another story in South Africa of the lives of young children being cut short so tragically and so violently by the people who are meant to protect them. Sikona Chona, live to us in Mtata. Thanks very much indeed.